Welcome to Boomer TV. I'm Julie Patterson. Oh, and I'm Paul Poteet. Uh, we're glad you're joining us for this episode today. You're Ju gonna love it. Julie, we got a full plate today. We gotta uh, get right to it, full plate. Reference to Second Helpings, if you've not heard of it. Uh, we're gonna show you exactly what they do. They even have a culinary school. You may know what Nate McMillan does. He's the coach of the Pacers. But do you know how he got there and the time he spent with the organization? You're gonna meet him on today's show. Lots of dribbling and assistant coach. Are we back to eating again? Uh, we're going to do a cooking segment on our show today. Mm. Heather's back with us. Heather's in the kitchen. Yeah, she does a great job That's there. It's always Yum. a delicious thing. Uh, maybe you like to go out with your special someone to eat. Maybe you don't have a special someone. Wait a minute, we gotta fix that. Indianapolis singles. Lots of uh, baby boomers that are single, and there's a wonderful service that is trying to make some connections, if you will. Thank you for making the connection, and you ready to roll? I think we're ready. Another episode of Boomer TV. TV is made possible with support from Westport Homes, dedicated to building homes for every chapter of life, with plans and details that match customers' specific needs and style. Additional funding is provided by Altman, Poindexter, and Wyatt attorneys, serving clients throughout central Indiana with wills, trusts, and estates, with over 70 years of combined experience. Unique Home Solutions, serving more than 30,000 homeowners since 1983 providing home remodeling services from minor updates to complete renovations with a mission to improve appearance and efficiency. Sports fan, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think you're probably a bigger sports fan than I am. I, I love watching football and basketball probably the most as a spectator. Yeah, I like uh, probably basketball the most as a spectator. Well, that would make you a true Hoosier then, right? <laughs> That's right. In so, 49 other states, it's, <laughs> it's just a, a game. But in Indiana, it's basketball. It's a big deal. Yeah. Nate McMillan has been the coach of the Indiana Pacers since 2016. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Uh, would you like to meet him? Yeah, he's worked his way up through the organization. Through the ranks. And he's so big now, he's on Boomer TV. Boy, all the way from North Carolina to Indianapolis. What an incredible run. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what it was like. I know uh, when you started out, not a, uh, a glamorized high school athlete. It, it sounds like you started tough. Can you tell us a little bit about how basketball started for you? You've been doing some research, huh? Of course. Now, <laughs> you always got to be prepared. You know, I've always uh, kind of played in the shadow of uh, really talented players. And, you know, that was the same in high school. We had really talented guys on the floor. And I was a guy who kind of was, uh, you know, behind the, sh you know, in the shadow of all this talent, you know, had the opportunity to uh, go to uh, JUCO and spent two years at a junior college by the name of Chuan. Uh, spent two years there and then all of a sudden uh, North Carolina State Wolfpack, uh, my, the ACC come a calling uh, after my uh, freshman year uh, in JUCO and was able to sign with NC State, which was about five minutes from my home. Wow and play for Coach Valvano. And, you know, by the blessing of God and uh, continuing to work hard, I uh, was drafted to the NBA uh, in the second round to uh, Seattle, where I spent uh, 19 years in Seattle, uh, both as a player and a coach. I uh, went from Seattle to Portland uh, for seven years and uh, came to Indiana uh, to work with Frank Vogel and uh, was eventually hired to be the head coach. Fantastic. So if I can take you back a little bit, North Carolina State obviously became a national champion there. Uh, Jim Valvano, legendary coach. Tell me 
the best thing you learned from Jimmy or the best thing you learned from your teammates going through that experience? Well, I didn't win the championship there. I actually okay. came in the year after the championship. Uh -huh. They won it in 83. Okay. I came in in 84. I got all the goodies yes. uh, from that championship team winning uh, with Lorenzo Charles and Spud Webb and Ernie Myers and, you know, Terry Gannon and, and all of those guys. And, uh, you know, it was just, you know, NC State was, was like, a, you know, I, I love NC State. As I mentioned, I uh, uh, lived five minutes from the campus. My mother worked at North Carolina State oh, University. He was either a Tar Heel fan or a Wolfpack fan. Right. And I was a Wolfpack fan, you know, growing up uh, watching David Thompson and Monty Tao and sure. all those guys. And, you know, that's where I learned to love basketball. You know, uh, the ACC was really big at that time. David Thompson and those guys used to come over to my community center and actually play. And I would watch them play on Saturday mornings, mm -hmm. just wanting to get out there and play with those guys. But they played on the big boy court. Right. I had to go down to the small boys court and play down there. But uh, that's where I learned to play and love the game. I have an older brother who uh, I pretty much followed him everywhere he he uh, he went. You know, he was uh, the father figure for me and my family. Uh, he played all sports, so I played all sports. And Randy is five years older than me, but uh, he was the guy who really got me into uh, sports and playing the game and playing the game the right way and playing it hard um, and. You know, to this day, he's still being a big brother, father figure, coaching and, uh, and teaching. And so, uh, obviously, your mother had some work ethic in mm -hmm. her. Absolutely. And when we uh, look at what you did uh, for the Supersonics, um, second team all-defensive player, led the league in steals, uh, that's about hard work. Yes. So when we, uh, when we talk about the attitude it took to be that person back then, how do you transfer that to these guys now? And what do you want a Nate McMillan Pacer team to look like? Well, we, you know, we, we play the game the right way. And uh, we give 100% uh, when we're out on the floor at all times, uh, whether we're in practice or in games. And, you know, you want uh, your, the fan base to respect the way that you play the game. Uh, you play the game the right way. You play the game together. Uh, you have to sacrifice. You know, I've always said that it's always about, you know, the name on the front of the jersey. You know, sure. we, of course, a lot of times player, players uh, play for the respect of the name on the back of the jersey. But I work for the Indiana Pacers. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that I give my all uh, to this organization uh, to make them better and improve them uh, in all aspects, you know, of the game on and off the floor. You know, I, I look at the attendance. I've been a fan of the Pacers since 1972. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could tell there's a difference in a Nate McMillan coach team than there has been in the past, the commitment to effort and that type of thing. So as a fan, thank you mm -hmm. uh, for doing that. You know, we know that uh, Indiana uh, is a big basketball state, just as North Carolina is. And we've had some arguments who, who, who who's the bigger basketball state. but. Right. Uh, uh, we know how important it is to the fan base here uh, that the Pacers are playing good basketball. That's good. Well, Nate, I want to thank you for your hard work, uh, for the effort you put forward to the Pacers. We know it's going to show all season long, and uh, it's just a pleasure and honor to have you running our team. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I look forward to this season. Uh, we have a great opportunity. Uh, we know that uh, there's, there's a little buzz about us, and hopefully yeah. we can live up to that. Right, no LeBron in the East. Yeah, no LeBron in the East. Uh, and, you know, we, we actually had some success against him. Not yes, enough. Yes, did. But, uh, you know, it's good to see that guy out Go west. Away. Yeah, yeah, we'll see him in the finals. Absolutely. Then. All right. Absolutely. This is Glenn Bill for Boomer TV. Oh, when it comes to food, Julie, I like a second helping. I bet you do. I, I am a big eater. You've heard of second helpings, though. It's yes, I have, although I think there's more probably to it than what I realize. There is. They repurpose food and feed thousands. Mm -hmm. um, also, they have a culinary school. Did you know that? Yeah. I'm just. Uh, how do you in repurpose food? That sounds interesting. Well, you're going to find out in this segment, and you'll find out all about second helpings.
Second Helpings provides hunger relief. CEO Jennifer Vigren shares how they are changing the community one meal at a time. We don't serve anyone here in the building. All of our meals go out into the community. The only people who are served here in the building are the people who are volunteering that day and maybe a few guests and that's the meal that's prepared by our culinary job training students. But the magic that's going in on in the hunger relief kitchen right now, that's where all of our volunteers are hard at work. And they're preparing more than 4,000 meals a day that are going to senior centers, they're going to shelters, they're going to children's programs, all free of charge. We run about 30 volunteers on a shift normally um, every day, so meals could not be done without them. Um, they're all, I'd say most of them are foodies, so they really enjoy what they're doing. They like to taste the tilts, um, give them a lot of freedom with it, you know, let them have fun while they're doing it. That's what we're, my philosophy is all about. We're feeding people and having a great time. Everything looks so healthy too. I mean, you've got fresh cut vegetables. So is that really important to you that these are hot, nutritious meals? Absolutely. I think that they, they, we need to feed people nutritious meals. We need to think about the agencies we're sending them to and what their clients are like and what we need to send to them. As far as the culinary job training, I mean, it's again, an awesome thing. We're taking people that are underemployed, unemployed and teaching them skills not just to go out into the culinary field, but life skills. You know, some people may have not had a job in a long time. They may not understand how to bank or how to write a good resume. So our goal is to teach them the fundamentals of cooking so they can go into a restaurant and maybe get a step above an entry level position, as well as understand how life works. And, and if they choose, to go into the restaurant field and it works for a while, but they've learned some other skills, that's fantastic too. Second Helpings transforms lives through the power of food with free training in its culinary school. This is our CJT, Culinary Job Training Kitchen. Our class will be anywhere from seven to 14 students. You can see they have all the equipment that a restaurant would have, um, lots of stock pots, you know, prep area, slicers, ovens. So it's laid out with uh, some pretty good equipment. How did they do all this? Second Helpings rescues lives from hunger by first rescuing food. track to rescue two and a half million pounds of food this year. So it's food that would have otherwise um, been wasted, but we get to turn it into a million meals and train adults with it. I love the term even, the way you phrase that, that you rescue this food. So tell us a little more about that story, the rescuing. Sure, so it's food that has either been overproduced or um, overordered. So as you can see, it's all beautiful things but maybe they couldn't sell it, or perhaps the box was damaged, but the product's still good. So we'll come and get it. We pick the food up in refrigerated trucks. Food safety is number one for us. We'll bring it back to Second Helpings, um, sort it, decide what we can use in the meals, and then what we can't use, we will redirect to food pantries and other places that can use it. More than 700 volunteers, most of them boomers, help make and distribute the food to locations throughout Indianapolis. I've been doing this for 13 years every Friday and plus some extra things when they have uh, fundraisers and stuff. So I just love it. You have an apron on. What do you do? You mainly cook in the kitchen? Uh, whatever they have for me to do. Chop food, dice food, make, you know, dish up food to send out. I do about everything that I can handle. And the volunteers I work with, I feel like I've known them my whole life, you know, so it's good. You ask the drivers, they'll tell you they've got the best volunteer job, although just about every volunteer in the building will tell you they have the best volunteer job. But they get to go out and take those nice hot meals to the child care centers and to the after school programs. And when you talk to those drivers, they'll tell you there is nothing more rewarding than seeing where those meals are going. I imagine the happy faces and knowing that they're getting warm, good food. 
Yes, and the kids who are all excited going, what's for lunch today, what's for lunch today? And so they get to be part of that and really see that impact directly. Well, Jennifer, we thank you so much, Second Helpings, for nourishing the community, nourishing those in need, and for all the boomers, there's lots of things to still do here, take part, drive a van, make some food. So thank you so much for all that you do. And I'm Cheryl Mathis with Boomer TV. There are a lot of baby boomers that are single out there. Maybe they've lost a spouse, they've gone yeah. through a rough time, a divorce, who knows the reason, but lots of boomers are searching, looking for that perfect someone, and they might be out there. And this is America, so I bet somebody has figured out a, an efficient way to, to, uh, to help them out and run a business. Two words, indie singles. <laughs> guys, you know, it can be hard to make friends and trying to date can really seem impossible, almost terrifying to even bring up the conversation. So we brought in Kristen Campbell from Indianapolis Singles to give us the skinny on how all of this works. So this can be kind of a nerve wracking conversation to have. How does Indianapolis Singles even work? We're a different kind of service than people are accustomed to because it is more serious. It's for grown-ups. It's for people who want more of a permanent relationship. It's not like the online or going to the bar, which is for people that are looking for more disposable relationships. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a part, they, they look at partners as being a lot more interchangeable. Um, they kind of take relationships for granted. And what we do takes an investment of time and money and effort and energy. So it's already people who value having a partnership. And they tend to be looking for more of a permanent relationship. Whether that's marriage or not, um, it depends on the individuals. But they are looking for something that is long term, that is the person they're really wanting to spend the rest of their life. Well, you see so many things about online dating now and this and that. What is it about what you do that makes it different, safer, a little better? Well, just off the bat, we, we do criminal background checks. Okay. So, you know, you're not going to be dating any sexual predators or violent felons. Important thing. It's very important. And especially if you have children or grandchildren, you don't want to even, you know, take that question into hand. So we start with the criminal background checks. We do financial background checks. Um, they do sign a contract promising that they're not married. Um, they are providing with accurate information. Uh, our photographer takes the photo so you know that the person in the photo is the same person that shows up on the wow, date. Wow, looks like their picture. Okay. Yeah, so they didn't slip a picture from when they used to have hair uh -huh. or before they gained 50 uh -huh. pounds. <laughs> or maybe their cute cousin. Uh -huh. um, and so you already have that. And then we also have videos, which you'd be surprised at how much of a difference that makes. Yeah. Because if you see how a woman or a man smiles when they're telling a story mm -hmm. versus how they smile in a picture, it's a completely different yeah. part of who they are. But also, when you hear a person's voice, that can make or break whether or not you're attracted to that person. Mm -hmm. And so the video basically takes the first couple of minutes out of a date, so you don't really go on bad dates. Mm -hmm. You get to be a lot more efficient with your filters. Okay. And busy is one of the biggest reasons people do this, and so you don't want to waste time with the wrong people. Yeah, so what would you say, like, our viewers that are saying, Sh should I try this? Is this for me? What kind of advice would you give them? Well, I mean, it's always worth coming and checking it out. Um, you do need to qualify, so if you do have any criminal background check, you're here. it's really not going to be worth your time. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not serious, if you just want to date a lot, if you're looking for more of the Walmart-style quantity over quality type dating, mm -hmm. we're not for you. We are for people who really value that partnership. And one of the things that happens in most relationships is that you get a giver and a taker. Mm -hmm. And so one person is always feeling depleted while the other person's getting everything they want. But what we tend to attract is we, we tend to attract the givers. So you get two givers in a relationship where they're both refueling each other. Mm -hmm. So you always have more to give. And so it's setting it up for a foundation of a better relationship in the long run. All right, tell me about some of the special events and things that are happening at Indianapolis Singles. 
Uh, we do events every month, and we, that, which is a really great way to get out and meet people because a lot of times that two-dimensional format of online dating, mm -hmm. I'm not a person that um, really comes across in that format. I'm someone who sort of has to grow on people organically and get to know them. I'm just a little slower moving in that manner. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little old-fashioned, I don't know. Um, so the events are a really great way to just sort of get to know people in more of an organic manner. And I've had so many people over the years say that they've met some of their best friends through the events wow. because you're in the same sort of chapter of life. Mm -hmm. and, and as adults, we have a hard time meeting any sort of uh, connections in our social life. Tell me about a success story, about some well, a couple that you've met and that you know. I um, was going to say, you were just telling I me. I did. I have a friend who met, uh, who has dear friends who met through the service mm -hmm. and have been married for a very long time. So it happens. Yes. And I started with the company um, in 2001, so okay. it's been 17 years. And I not only have the people that I knew got, that got married back then, but also most of the women I've worked with over the years have gotten married through the service, oh, wow. which really tells you because they know what's going on behind yeah, everything. The inner workings. And so for them to want to spend the rest of their life with members that come in really mm -hmm. tells you so much. And I have never heard of any of them getting divorced after all these years. Wow. I know. That is some success rate it right is. there. It is. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much. So if you had any questions, there's your answers right here. There's even more information on their website. For now, I'm Amanda Clark with Boomer TV. Who's hungry? I am hungry. I heard something rumbling over there, and I believe I that was your hungry. tummy. I am hungry. You're hungry? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a good thing the mic is up here and not down there. Yeah, it is a good thing. <laughs> so Heather joins us again for uh, this episode, and she's going to be She's made some amazing things she already has. this season, so I can't wait to see what she has next. Well, let's watch. Today I'm making our famous cranberry jalapeno cream cheese dip. It has become a tradition in our family, whether it's the holidays or not. I just love cranberries. So I take 12 ounces of fresh cranberries, put them in a food processor. I'm going to take the juice of one lemon with our handy dandy little contraption here. This keeps all the seeds in, which I love. Okay, then about five green onions. With the green onions, you can just use your scissors to kind of cut them right on in there. You only want to cut the green part though. Once you get down to the white part, it becomes a little uh, bitter, so you don't want that. Look at how pretty these colors are together with the vibrant red and the green. It's just really, really gorgeous. Okay, then we're going to add a jalapeno pepper. Um, you could do two small ones, one big ones. People who don't like it too spicy, you can get rid of the seeds and kind of that white pithy part. Um, if you like it spicy, but by all means, keep it on in there. So I'm just going to cut them into kind of match sticks like this. Just like that. I love this balance of sweet and spicy. They play off each other really, really nicely. And then you have the tart of the cranberries that kind of brings it all together. So we'll add that in here. And then we are going to add, hear me out here, it's a cup of sugar, but you really need the sweetness of the sugar to offset the tanginess of the cranberry. I'm putting that in. And then some cilantro. Now you either really love cilantro or you don't. So this one's optional. I'm just gonna put a little bit of it in here. Kind of a rough chop on that. It's okay if you get some of these stems in here. They're completely edible and they give it a lot of flavor. All right, so it all goes in your food processor. And this, all we wanna do is give it a quick pulse. We don't wanna over mix it because then it will liquefy and we don't want that. Okay. So just a couple pulses like that. We want to keep it kind of still looking like cranberries, OK? So then we are going to let this sit overnight so the flavors really marry together. I have one that is sat overnight. This is the finished product. Look how pretty that is. And what I like to do is take a pie plate or an oval plate, coat it with cream cheese that's been brought up to room temperature, and we're just going to kind of take the cranberry relish that sat overnight 
And I'm literally just spooning this over the cream cheese mixture that I've put on the pie plate. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at how red and vibrant that is. And just kind of spread it around just like that. This is a really nice, easy dish to assemble right on site if you're going to somebody's house. And then line it with crackers. And it's just a really, really nice dip. It's just delicious. Now, if you have a couple of extra fresh cranberries, here's what I love to do. Take a mason jar, put a couple orange slices inside, a sprig of rosemary, fill it up with water, and then just pop a tea light on top. You light it and it kind of makes your whole home feel aromatic. I really hope that your guests love this dip as much as I do. I'm Heather McWilliams for Boomer TV. Bon Appetit. Another fun episode, did you think? Fun, and as usual, I learned something. I feel I learned more than you, which means maybe... Maybe you needed to. <laughs> yeah, it's right? more about me than you. But I loved the basketball. I loved all of it. It was good. Uh, yeah, we had some good food, good fun. That's a good morning. And hopefully some good connections, if you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that hey, too. <laughs> join us again next Sunday morning right here on WFYI, 9 a.m. And have a great day. Tell your friends about us. Yeah. We'll see you soon. For more All Things Boomer, just visit our website. That's IndieBoomer.com. Indie Boomer connects TV, magazine, and radio. It contains useful information for baby boomers all over the Indianapolis metropolitan area. And you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Pick up Indie Boomer magazine at most Kroger stores and libraries. Look for us all over Indie. Listen to Boomer Radio every Saturday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. on Freedom 95 with a rebroadcast Sundays at 7.30. Indie Boomer, for the next chapter of your life. Boomer TV is made possible with support from Westport Homes, dedicated to building homes for every chapter of life, with plans and details that match customers' specific needs and style. Additional funding is provided by Altman, Poindexter, and Wyatt Attorneys, serving clients throughout central Indiana with wills, trusts, and estates with over 70 years of combined experience. Unique Home Solutions, serving more than 30,000 homeowners since 1983. Providing home remodeling services from minor updates to complete renovations with a mission to improve appearance and efficiency.